ADX Studio Portal's entity lists provide a robust, easy to use method to expose CRM entities on your web portal to manage data or build entire web applications. In this video, we'll explore the use of entity lists and how they help surface CRM views in your portal. We'll walk through the process of creating an entity list and we'll discuss a few configuration features, including filters, search functions, and the use of custom JavaScript to enhance the end user experience. Let's get started with CRM views and how they relate to entity lists. So what is a CRM view? CRM views are presented to a user of the CRM web application anytime a user wishes to view a list of records. A given view affects both the records that appear in the list via filtering as well as the column names and layout. Views are stored within the schema of a CRM organization in fetch XML format, can be modified and created via the CRM view editor, and can be imported and exported via CRM solution packages. So let's just take a quick look at a CRM view in action. I'm going to navigate to contacts. And as you can see here, I have a list of contacts being displayed. In this case, this is based off of the active contacts view. Uh, which shows all contacts that are active in the system, I can switch between CRM views by using the upper left-hand drop-down here. Now, because I have system administrator privileges, I can also view system views directly, allowing me to uh, potentially create new views or edit existing views. So you can see here a list of all the different views for the contact entity. And if I open up an existing view, I can then edit the column layout, and I can also uh, take a look at the filter criteria as well. So you can see here in this case, this view is only going to show contacts whose status is active, and I can add additional filters uh, or remove filters using this editor. The ADX Studio Entity Lists feature allows us to surface CRM views on the portal. An entity list consists of a data record in the CRM which defines a CRM view or views to be rendered on the portal. This entity list can then be hosted by a web page in an ADX Studio website. CRM out-of-the-box views or custom views can both be used with entity lists. So for example, we have a list of leads here being displayed on the portal. This list will display uh, one or more views for the list entity, the records being returned by this list, and the columns being displayed are determined by the CRM view, and it's hosted on a web page called Lead List. Now let's create an entity list of contact records that can be displayed on the portal. OK, so I've navigated to the portals area in CRM, and I'm looking at all of the entity lists in the system. I'm going to create a new one, so I'll do so by clicking the New icon here. And when I'm creating my new entity list, the first thing that I need to do is to give it a name. I'm going to be displaying a list of contacts on the portal, so I'm going to call it contact list. The next thing I'm going to do is to select the entity for which I want to display a list on the portal. So here I can scroll through all of the different entities in the system, both custom entities as well as default out-of-the-box entities. In this case, I'm going to choose contact. And with my entity selected, a list of all of the different CRM views for that entity will appear here. I just need to select one of them uh, for display on the portal. In this case, I'm going to choose Active Contacts. Great, now that's all that uh, I need for a new entity list to be created. So I'll just save that. And now what I want to do is to have this be hosted by a web page on the portal. So here on my portal, I can navigate to a web page that I have pre-prepared here, contact list. Right now it's empty. My goal is to take this entity list and to display it on this page. So in order to do that, I'm going to scroll down on the entity list here all the way to web pages. And I will add an existing web page. If you didn't already have a web page created here, you could create one. In this case, I'm going to just associate it with the contact list page that I already have. So I'm going to click the plus, then the magnifying glass, and I'll scroll down and select contact list. Now I'll just make sure that my changes are saved here, and I'll refresh my portal. 
And now you can see a list of contacts is being displayed on the portal. This list is being determined by the active contacts view in the CRM. So if we just check out that view, you can see that in terms of the column names as well as the column layouts and the records that are being displayed by the list match in both places. The columns are also sortable in the same configuration as in the CRM. So you can see here that the in the CRM I can sort by full name and I have the same capability on the portal as well. Now I'll demonstrate a few configuration options that will help you further customize the entity list views. So the first thing I might like to customize is to render out multiple CRM views on the portal. So you can see here that I have the active contacts view selected, and I have the capability to render out multiple views um, so that the portal user can simply switch between them. So I'll leave active contacts selected, and additionally, I'll select a couple more views. I will select inactive contacts, as well as contacts responded to campaigns in the last six months. So I'll make sure that my changes have been saved. And when I refresh my portal, you'll see that a dropdown has now appeared, which displays the di different views that I can switch between. So you can see that I have the ability to switch to inactive contacts, as well as contacts that have responded to campaigns in the last six months. Incidentally, there are none, so a default empty list message is being displayed here. And the next thing that I might like to customize is to actually configure a, a custom message that will be rendered when an empty list is being displayed. So I'll just enter in a custom message here. There are no contacts that match this criteria. And when I save this and refresh my portal, now you can see there are no contacts that match this criteria. The message that I typed in is now being rendered. So I'll just switch back to active contacts here. And you can see that 10 records at a time are being displayed, which is the default number. Um, I can switch between pages. Okay, so there's pagination automatically. And I also have the ability to either increase or decrease the number of records um, that is being rendered at a time. So in order to do this, I can just adjust the page size. You can see here that by default it's 10. I might set it to a lower number like 4. And we'll just refresh our portal to see that change. So now you can see that only four records are being displayed at a time. I have the ability to paginate between them, either using the arrows or by selecting a page directly using the page buttons. So now just to get more records being displayed, I'll switch the page size back to 10. Now, if I have a lot of records in the system, I'm going to want to be able to search for specific ones. That's easy. You can enable our search feature underneath the search section on the entity list by simply clicking Enabled. I also have the ability to set a placeholder text. If no placeholder text is entered in for the search, then the search bar will just be empty. I'm going to enter in a custom placeholder message. So enter your search criteria. And now, after I refresh my portal, you can see that a search bar has appeared with my placeholder text inside. So I can search for a specific record. Let's search for Adrian. You can see that the Adrian contact is being displayed here. And just like in the CRM, I can make use of wildcard characters in order to refine my search. 
So I might do something like look for all records that end with the word contact. And now you can see that the records that match my search criteria are being rendered. I'll just reset my search to show all records. And finally, the last thing I might like to do is to add some custom JavaScript to enhance the user uh, UI experience or to increase the capabilities of my entity list on the portal. So in order to do this, you can scroll down to the Options section, and you can see here that there's a field for custom JavaScript. So I've got some uh, jQuery code prepared here, and I can use jQuery because out of the box, ADX Studio supports the full jQuery library. So in this code, I'm just going to look for any row that contains uh, missing information, in other words, an empty cell, and I'm just going to uh, set its background color uh, in order to highlight that row. So I'll just copy and paste in this jQuery code here. Make sure that my entity list record is saved. And now when I refresh my portal, you can see that rows that are missing information have been highlighted red. So that's all that's needed to configure entity lists for default or custom CRM records. Be sure to watch our other tutorials for deeper configuration and display options at community.adxstudio.com.